Hello fam, been wearing the same shirt for three days and blames the virus, but probably would have done it before here, bringing you another Dota 2 video in which we're going to talk about this patch that just dropped 7.27. So I haven't read this before. These are my initial reactions. I can see that this is kind of a long patch from the scroll bar here, and uh, I'll try to keep it short because I know people like that. So let's just get right into it. So general, we have hero kills. Base XP has been increased from 40 to 100, which is great. A uh, hero kill last hit gold has been increased. Uh, in the early levels, actually just increased altogether, especially in the early levels where you have that base that's higher. So basically, uh, kills are worth more in terms of XP and gold, which is great, honestly, because I think a lot of pro players have been complaining that in the laning stage, kills are kind of meaningless. You have constant suicides. People aren't even suiciding to tier twos anymore. They're literally just running into the enemies and dying. And that, to me, really shows that kills are borderline worthless if it doesn't actually get you something. Uh, the, the goal just is in, insignificant. So assist gold has been rescaled so that it's 45. Uh, instead of being 45 plus 0 0.033, it is 30 plus 0 0.038, and then, of course, times net worth. So basically, in the early game, it's worth less, and in the late game, you're going to get a lot more because people have more net worth which is interesting, uh, kind of to, I suppose, to rebalance the fact that you're getting so much XP and gold for the early level kills. Uh, you don't want to give too much. Passive gold income has been increased from 85 to 95, which is great because supporting has sucked for quite some time now. And there was a patch there where supports had GPM talents at level 10, where supporting was actually fun. You could actually get items. So I love any change like this. Bounty rune... Our bounty runes are now reliable gold, which is fantastic. I feel like every game that I cast, it's somebody dies without buyback because they didn't have they didn't have reliable gold, and so they lost a huge chunk of gold, and they don't keep buyback. And uh, that's because passive gold was the only thing that gave reliable gold, and now it's passive gold plus bounty runes. So as if bounties weren't already extremely important. Tower last hit bounty from 180 to uh, 120, 140, 160, 180, scaling up depending on the towers that you're getting. So I suppose that's just to offset the early gold that you're going to be getting and the assist gold that you're going to be getting. Uh, not that tower gold was really significant before. It was more so you'd take a tower, you'd be able to control the area of the map, and then you'd have control of the bounty runes and the creep camps there, and that's really where you would get gold. But it's a little bit of, a, um, of an adjustment. So neutral stacking support bounty has been increased from 35% to 40%. So thank goodness, uh, once again, I'm super stoked when, whenever there's any changes that make supporting more fun. Okay, so we get to the map changes. And uh, these ones, I, I definitely, every time there's a patch, I would always like to see these in the actual lobby, uh, but... You know, I'll read that anyway. Uh, so midline creep camps are changed from medium to small. Uh, I would say that's probably a buff. Uh, I think by the time that you can farm medium camps anyway, it's no big deal to like walk away from the mid lane. So this will give like small camps are just fantastic. They're just so easy to kill. Uh, remove, remove prowler camp. That's great. I think whoever had the idea to add this camp into the game in the first place was a sadist. So it's it's great that it's removed. Adjusted the low ground tree layout near both the outposts to prevent channeling from the low ground without destroying trees first. So making it more of like a skill thing, you know, it's not just oh, you walk into the spot and and channel the, the outpost, you have to actually kill trees, which which is cool. Anything that introduces more skill into the game, I'm, I'm a fan of, although it does feel a little weird that you can do that in the first place. Removed a tree to make an opening in the tree line to the right of the mid-radiant tier 1 tower. I would have to see that one in the actual game. Uh, change the camp to the right of the radiant secret shop from a medium to hard camp. Okay, so more farm there, but it's, you know, you can't just back off there and farm that as, a, as an offlaner. Swap the hard camp to the right of the uh, radiant top tier 2 tower with an ancient camp. So ancients are now back in the triangles, which is... Uh, I, I like that. I like that. Makes the map more symmetric. Uh, reduced the size of the Radiant Safe Lane Hard Camp Spawn Box. Neat. Uh, Radiant Safe Lane Small Camp Spawn Box size has been increased. Dire Safe Lane Small Camp uh, Spawn Box has been reduced. So, Dire Safe Lane Small Camp... Okay, so, basically what this means is if, if it's been increased... There's more places to block the camp if it's been reduced. There are less places to block the camp. So that could be something that 
factors into whether Radiant or Dire Safe Lane is better. Outposts can no longer be stolen by the other team unless they kill one of your Tier 2 towers. Okay, wow, that is interesting. That is pretty cool. Uh, so the map will kind of be how it was before. And this makes Tier 2s way more valuable. So the map will be how it was before, basically, in terms of the fluidity of it and people moving around so much until a Tier 2 falls. So this really makes it so that if you get an early Tier 2 and you keep your Tier 2s alive, it's incredibly good. Man, Tier 2s are insane now. Like, you legitimately need to defend your Tier 2s and take Tier 2s if you can. Outpost now reveals enemies channeling at it. Probably should have done that in the first place. The vision radius is now shown by holding alt. That also, you know, should have been done in the first place. All lane creeps now avoid hero aggro until they are near enemy creeps. Neutrals or within 1,550 range of their Tier 1 tower. This, uh, this active <laughs> until the siege units spawn at 5 minutes. Okay, 1,550. So that's like a pudge hook range. So you cannot creep cut at the tier 3 anymore. <laughs> Finally! I mean, I'm an offlaner, man. Don't get me wrong. I like doing the shenanigans. But I swear to God, I swear to Gaben, I have... Same thing. Uh, I have been calling for this in every single patch. There has been so... There have been so many shenanigans. So I hope this is true for the mid lane as well. Because people are cutting mid now too. Courier bounty reduced from 30 plus 7 per level to 25 plus 5 per level. Honestly, it gave way too much gold compared to all of the other reduced gold on the map. Uh, courier flying upgrade level requirement reduced from 5 to 4. Great. I That's quality of life right there. Getting your courier sniped feels really bad anyway, and it's not that satisfying to, to snipe people's couriers. Uh, courier movement speed has been reduced by 15% while carrying consumables. Wow. Okay, so higher value of uh, of stat items basically in the laning phase and a higher value of regen items as well on the career uh, so you want to start with more regen basically from the sounds of things but we'll see armor formula is now armor times 0 0.06 over uh, one plus armor times 0 0.06 i'm not sure what it was before but this still scales the same i believe because it's one plus on the bottom so it's still the same thing where the more armor that you have the less value each point is uh you know in terms of effective hp armor per agility has been increased slightly to uh one over six okay cool fantastic so i think that would make it uh zero point something repeating so that's why they say one over six uh, tier 1 tower attack speed has been increased and base attack speed because, okay, cool, tier 1 tower is really easy to take. Uh, damage has been reduced. Okay, so this makes like Jakiro better, reducing the attack speed of towers because, actually no, technically uh, base attack speed, yeah, I think it would make Jakiro slightly better. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So the, the damage has been reduced from 110 to 90, so it's got the same overall DPS, but if you take like one hit from the tower, it's not... It's not as big of a deal. Tier 2 Towers attack speed has been increased. So same thing, same thing. Same overall DPS. And Siege Unit's health has been increased. Now, I'd need to test this in a lobby, but I'm not entirely sure what that does in terms of making, making it more difficult to last hit those. And if you can, like, put some armor spell on them or have a buckler and make them take, like, one extra hit from the tower or survive so that it doesn't get just hit, killed in three hits, because I think that can sometimes happen now. Uh, but but now it looks like in 7.26 that's not or 7.27 that's not possible. So all pick drafting has been reworked. Each team now picks two heroes per round before they're revealed, rather than just one. The final round is single selection, so it goes one more. Okay, interesting. That's uh, so it's it's more balanced basically in terms of if you're in that second round of picks, you get to see two heroes like the the the. The two people that are picking in that phase have the same advantage, which is interesting. That's that's. I mean, it it seems very similar. Instead of having it be role based, you know, it's it's um. So let's see if it's. So I would pick at the same time as the carry. So the supports pick, and then the supports pick, and then the carry and offlane pick. Carry and offlane pick. So the carry can't counter pick me. That's cool. I like that. So. Basically, supports are going to get mega countered now. <laughs> it's the only information we have. 
Uh, and then last pick is still the same. So all pick hero ban count has been increased from 10 to 12. I don't know how the heck that works. Uh, I thought it was, I, I guess it just randomly bans heroes or something like that, or people's most played or the most popular heroes in the bracket, something, something like that. I remember hearing something like that. All pick first rounds now have five extra seconds for hero picking. Okay, uh, it felt kind of quick. So captain's mode ban count has been changed to, so this is competitive. We'll kind of ignore this because, you know, we're pub players here. So four one one two two three two. Okay, so kind of back to what it was. Putting more bands in the third, uh, the second phase, which is interesting. More heroes are going to get through. Captain's mode duration pick. So basically, if you're a competitive player, practicing the OP heroes is more value now because you're actually going to be able to get to play them. Duration has been reduced, making it harder to be a captain. Captain's mode first pick has been changed to so radiant gets first pick and then last pick. And then, all right, well, this is captain's mode, so whatever. Random draft hero pool, uh, cool, random draft. Uh, fountain now has fury swipe style attacking, so it makes it do more damage per hit, so less fountain diving. Uh, neutral items, nearby enemy range drop restriction. Oh, thank goodness. Why, man? I, I feel like it. the restriction was basically not even there. Uh, so many times, like, neutral items are still getting stolen, so thank goodness for this. Uh, neutral items will no longer drop. If they're uh, the nearby real hero source of kills is teleporting, thank goodness. Neutral items no longer draw for Meeple clones. If the Meeple Prime is not ready uh, nearby, thank goodness. These are all quality of life changes. Lifestyle amplification now stacks diminishingly rather than uh, additively. Okay, I actually had no idea that it stacked additively. No wonder that uh, neutral item was so good, the sword. Uh, HP region amplification now stacks diminishingly, uh, diminishingly rather than additively. I did know that worked additively. It was so silly when you got Spirit Vessel on Venomancer. Completely broke Alchemist. I even saw people put it to negatives. Uh, and I, So I, I feel like everything in Dota is dim, has diminishing returns, and just having these random things that are additive just kind of breaks the consistency. Uh, heal amplification now stacks... Okay, so same thing, spell lifesteal amplification, so basically all... Uh, sort of HP regen, lifesteal, that sort of stuff is now diminishing, which is cool. Items. Necronomicon no longer provides the Archer Aura, which was pretty insignificant. Attack damage type change from pier uh, piercing to hero, so it does less damage, to t way less damage to towers. And the damage amount has been adjusted. So, yeah, you can see the, the damage numbers here. So negative 57% versus creeps, negative 10% versus buildings, but it's better versus heroes. And people weren't using it for that. So it, it was all about uh, pushing with it and, and killing creeps, farming. Mana regen has been reduced to the sum of the components, unless Sage's Mask has been nerfed, which we'll see. Lost Will no longer deals damage through spell immunity. There's a lot of stuff that probably shouldn't go through spell immunity, but does. Witch Doctor, Maledict, for example, that kind of breaks that hero. Helm of Dominator no longer provides a damage and a regen aura. Dominate now gives the creep a buff that provides base damage, HP regen, and four mana regen. So you, basically, this is all about the creep. Cooldown has been reduced. Uh, recipe is now Helm of Iron Will, Crown, and a 725 gold recipe. Uh, let's see. Does that make it cost less? I wish they would put that in here. What was it before? It was, I think that's, I think it's about the same. Passive bonuses are now plus six armor, plus six HP regen, and plus six to all stats. So pretty good stat item. And you can use the creep to farm. Like maybe this is the new farming item. Uh, it, it seems, it seems interesting. Way less of a, it's like a drum. It's almost like a drum that, that, doesn't have an aura <laughs> and gives you a creep, which is kind of cool. So Vlad's now requires a Mask of Death, Blades of Attack, Ring of Basilius, and a 600 gold recipe. So now it costs 75 more gold, no longer provides the 3 armor aura, no longer provides plus 5 all stats. Lifesteal aura has been reduced again. Wow. And provides an 18% damage aura. So it's back to being the damage item. Wow. I feel like Vlad's is fantastic. I, I don't know. I feel like Vlad's is really good. God damn. Three, trading three armor for 18% damage? I mean, that seems pretty damn good. Seems pretty damn good, man. All right, uh, mana regen increased from 1.5 to 2. Cool. Uh, Drum of Endurance now requires a crown, sage's mask, wind lace, and a 600 gold recipe. Cheap? That sounds, that sounds pretty cheap. Is that more expensive or less expensive? Crown, sage's mask, wind lace. At the very least, those are extremely efficient items. Like, you want all of those. And then a 600 gold recipe. That sounds really good. No longer provides the attack speed aura, but it gives you six attributes, a 1.5 mana regen, 20 move speed bonus, and then it gives you an, an attack speed bonus when you use it, and then the active move speed has been increased. So it so no aura. No aura at all? Am I crazy? I'm pretty sure it has no aura at all. You can just use it. Man, they're really nerfing auras. 
Buckler has been reduced. Honestly, that was the only regen item that was left that hadn't been reduced. Mechanism now requires a buckler. Dude, look how far I am. I'm not even close to being done. Uh, mechanism now requires a buckler instead of a chainmail. That's cool. That makes buckler a better item. Now provides plus three armor. Uh, so that came from Vlad's and now it's here. Uh, self armor has been reduced, which makes sense that Vlad's doesn't give this armor aura because it doesn't have a buckler anymore. Self armor aura has been reduced from six to four and no longer provides plus four to all stats. So it still seems good, still seems fantastic. I mean, this buffs your, this buffs the crap out of your team now. Um, Guardian Greaves now provides armor aura, now uh, no longer gives you plus five all stats, and the self armor has been reduced, of course, because it has the aura now. Crimson Guard no longer provides stats, really nerfing all the stats on these aura items. And then the cooldown has been reduced slightly, Pretty decent item. I think it's it's about average. Blade Mail now has a 500 gold recipe instead of using a robe with a magi. No longer gives 8 int. And the armor bonus has been increased. Now has a passive com uh, component that returns 20 plus the attack damage. Now, is that is that just on auto attacks? Uh, that's, that's, that's my question. I feel like that's pretty damn good if it's not just autos. Like, if that's every single spell, that could be very broken. But we'll see. What? What? 485? What does this mean? All right, apparently there's a new basic item that costs 1,000 gold and gives you 35 attack speed. Apparently called 485. Very cool. Uh, Monkey King Bar now requires Blitz Knuckles. All right, I guess that's what this thing is. is this is Blitz Knuckles. Oh, good lord. Uh, okay, instead of quarter staff, damage has been reduced. Attack speed has been increased, so still roughly the same. Cool. Uh, Oblivion staff, bonus damage has been increased. Cool. Uh, Orchid malevolence, the mana regen has been reduced, the int has been reduced, and the recipe cost has been reduced, which I think is actually a pretty big buff. That's a pretty big, that's a really big buff to this item, legitimately. I mean, the problem with Orchid is that by the time you get it, there's such a small window, and then they get things that purge it. So anything to make that window larger is going to be really important. Shadow Amulet. The cost has been reduced significantly to 1,000. That's very cool. Great for supports. Glimmer Cape now combines Shadow Amulet, Cloak, and Gloves of Haste. Okay, cool. Uh, so the Glimmer Cape is still roughly the same amount, but Shadow Amulet is way cheaper. Good for support. Shadow Blade now uh, combines the Shadow Amulet, Blitz Knuckles, and Broadsword. Uh, damage has been reduced a bit. Attack speed has been increased, so ab about the same. But the buildup is nicer. Echo Saber Slow is now only applied by real heroes. That is a nerf to Monkey King. Big nerf. Uh, Silver Edge now requires Echo Saber instead of Ultimate Orb. I think people have been calling for this for a long time. This is a huge buff to Echo Saber. Just the fact that it builds into something bigger, that is really damn good. Nerf to Monkey King, but buff to all the other heroes like Sven that would like to build an Echo Saber, but kind of want that slot for something else that's very cool uh, and ultimate orb is just a garbage item so you don't you don't want to build anything that has that really bracer the stats have all been reduced no longer grants magic resistance but gives you three damage and hp regen well stat items very good especially with the courier nerfs where it takes more time for the courier to get to you so man building an early bracer super good Wraith Band now grants plus uh, 1.5 armor and 5 attack speed and 0 0.6 mana regen and 3% spell amp. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of these items. I'm a huge fan of these items now for laning, especially Bracer. Freaking of regen, the health regen has been reduced, but so is the cost. Oh my goodness. They really don't want people to use tangos anymore, do they? So mana regen has been reduced pretty significantly, almost halved, and then the cost has been reduced a bit. So this is this is this has been nerfed this item, but it's it's been too good for for too long. So ring of protection, the cost has been increased. Ring of Basilius, the recipe cost has been increased. So the total price remains the same on all of these things. It's just that their recipes are increased uh, because of the the changes to these smaller items. Uh, okay, so we'll ignore all of that. Let's see. Tranquil boots, unbroken speed has been reduced. Everybody goes that on supports. Uh, broken speed has been reduced reduced as well. So tranquil boots just straight nerfed, which is. Which is fine, because honestly, Tranquil Boots are like old four staff. It's just a given that supports go for them. Gaia no longer provides the mana loss reduction. Now provides 24% mana regen amplification. Huh. 
Huh, that's that's interesting. I feel like that's worse. But maybe I'm crazy. I, I do feel like that's worse. And, and so none of these provide mana loss reduction. It's all mana regen amplification. Spells cost a lot of mana, so I'm not sure how I feel about that. I feel like that's pretty bad, but we'll see. It's hard to say. Uh, so spell amp has been increased. Spell amp has been increased on both of these items. Still feel like those are kind of bad items. Solange no longer provides spell lifesteal amplification. Same for upgrades, So, but still regular lifesteal. Kaya now provides 24% spell lifesteal amplification. Okay, so they basically took the spell lifesteal amplification from Sanj and put it on Kaya, which is cool. Big buff to... That is a buff to Kaya, but the problem is the mana loss reduction is gone. And I think that's what a lot of people really liked about that. Soul Booster now provides magic resist. Bloodstone pro provides magic resist. Octarine Core, magic resist because it's got a soul booster. So, I mean, soul booster has been terrible forever, so... That's that's really good. Bloodstone, the cooldown has just been straight reduced to 85. Wow. I mean, 250. Come on. It's not that good what Bloodstone does. It's not that good. So 473, new base item, grant spell lifesteal, and costs 900 gold. Hmm. Only 2.5% against creeps. But this, this seems like it could be... Okay, it's a voodoo mask. That's what that is. Soul booster. Voodoo Mask and 900 recipe cost. So Octarine Core has been reduced to 500 cost. Or sorry, 5,000. What is wrong with me? That is interesting. Probably the biggest problem with Octarine Core is how expensive it is. So that's a pretty big buff to that item. I would say the Int is, is irrelevant on that item. I, I can't think of a single hero that goes Octarine Core that likes the Int. It's not right clickers. It's heroes that cast spells. Veil of Discord. Attributes reduced to 4 from 9. Recipe cost has been reduced significantly to 650 from 1,150. Cooldown has been increased from 20 to 25. And the spell amplification has been reduced. So basically this item is slightly nerfed in everything except the recipe cost has been reduced. So it's an early value item again. Holy Locket can now target allies with the magic stick active. Holy shit, this might actually make Holy Locket a good item. That's pretty cool. I like that change. So it's like a mini mechanism, but you're amplifying your heal too. So imagine if you have a mech and a Holy Locket and you heal somebody. That sounds like a lot of healing. That sounds pretty damn good. Soul Ring now requires 2x Gauntlet, Ring of Protection. Wow, that's cool. And 350 gold recipe. So now it gives you 6 strength and 2 armor, but not the HP regen. Bit of a side grade. Depends on if you need the armor or not. Uh, Hyperstone, the attack speed bonus has been increased, and subsequently the attack speed bonus on everything that builds from Hyperstone has been increased. Assault uh, Crest no longer provides a plus 5 stats. Battle Fury now requires a Claymore instead of a Mithril Hammer, uh, so less cost, and the damage has been reduced, and the... Am I crazy? Claymore? That's a, that's a 1400 gold item, right? So they get, you get a, a bit less damage? But man, why? I feel like this is a buff to Battle Fury. Like, people just want to get this item early, and then you farm like hell with it. It's it's like, it's, you know, you invest early in life. You're going to make way more money than if you invest later in life because it has time to accumulate. And so this is this is just great. That, that's cool for carries. Broadsword damage reduced a little bit. Crystallis damage has been reduced as well. But the recipe cost has been reduced. CC and C will be very stoked about this. Crystallis sounds pretty damn value. Cloak has been reduced in the cost. So by 100, Hood of Defiance. Uh, change so that the whole thing is now the same. Satanic now is a 500 gold recipe. That item's way too damn good, especially with how good Rapier is. Meteor Hammer cooldown has been reduced. Love it. Stun duration has also been reduced, so it's better for farming quickly and tower taking, but it's less of a team fighting thing and stunning thing. Uh, let's see. So recipe is now Perseverance uh, or Perseverance or whatever the hell, Perseverance. I don't know. People pronounce it 10 different ways. Crown and 200 gold recipe and now provides plus 8 all stats. And then a bunch of mana and HP regen. Okay, cool. So Meteor Hammer seems, nah, it seems okay. If you're Trian, it seems great. Spirit Vessel no longer has a heal reduction aura. Soul Release regen has been increased from 30 to 40. Soul Release DPS has been increased as well. And enemy regen reduction has been reduced to negative 45%. So this does seem like a pretty big nerf to Vessel. Because... 
it, you know, the percentage is the most important part because it's good against alchemists and necrophoses and these scaling regen heroes. So giving it just raw damage and raw regen is, it's not that good. It was the fact that this thing scaled. So that's a pretty big nerf to, to Vessel, I would say. Shiva's Guard, Freezing Aura, now applies a 25% heal reduction aura in the area, and yet and the recipe cost has been increased to 750. That is potentially really interesting. That is cool. So Shiva's Guard was one of the least bought late game items, so it's good to see that it's uh, that it's, it's now maybe going to get picked up. Dagon now requires a Belt of Strength, Band of Elven Skin, Robe of the Magi, and 1250 gold recipe. Now provides a bunch of attributes, and the recipe cost has been increased. I don't know. I think Dagon's still bad. It's just a nuke. It's just so it's so vanilla. Heart of Tarask no longer provides 10 health regen, nor regen and heal amplification. Now passively provides 1% health regen, while out of combat provides 50% health regen amplification. So that's been swapped, except it's it's le the HP regen is less, the, the raw health regen. And then the strength has been reduced and the recipe cost has been increased. Now, that sounds like it could be really good on, like, like let's say you're, okay, if you're like a centaur, you have 3,000 HP. It's what, 30, 30 per second? Am I doing the math on that right? I think so. Anyway, uh, I have Scotty. Heal reduction has been increased because people still, still aren't going Scotty. They're favoring Abyssal Blade. By the way, I should say my, my thoughts on heart. It, it seems like it could be, my gut instinct is it could be pretty good, but I have to see it. Uh, the slow has been increased on Scotty because, once again, people still aren't going for it. Quelling Blade, cost reduced. Damage bonus has been reduced for melee heroes. And for some reason, range bonus has been increased. <laughs> cool. I'm going to get Quelling Blade on ranged heroes. Honestly, maybe. It's a... Uh, that's pretty, right? That's pretty good. Instead of like a Wraith Band or something, that's, that's actually not that bad. I was joking, but it's not that bad. So Lincoln Spear, recipe cost has been reduced because nobody goes that item. Abyssal Blade, cast range has been reduced because it's broken. Heaven's Halibur, evasion has been reduced because that's broken. Uh, Dragon Lance, agility has been increased because nobody goes for that. Hand of Midas, XP multiplier has been increased pretty significantly because nobody goes for that. Refresher Orb cooldown has been reduced. So man, they're basically just buffing all the bad items right here and nerfing all the good ones just straight up just just like that firing them out uh refresher orb so the cooldown has been reduced cool ultimate orb cost has been reduced because it's just the crappiest item in dota infused raindrops uh mana regen has been reduced surprisingly people don't go that too much uh, nullifier projectile speed has been increased even though that's already a broken item people just aren't going for it agnum's blessing recipe cost has been reduced because it's just it's such a late game thing Really, it's, you know, you're you're basically paying 1,600 gold for a slot, uh, which is pretty expensive uh, in the early game, especially, obviously. Ether Lens, recipe cost has been reduced because nobody goes for that. Boots of Travel reduces the cooldown from 40 to 30, but that's bots too, which people don't go for anymore, even remotely. Smoke of Deceit, cost has been reduced. Cool, easier for supporting. Uh, Sentry Ward, the Replenish cooldown has been reduced. So like, once again, they're just trying to make supporting a lot easier. And then the Tome of Knowledge, that is also going to be less expensive because if I'm at position five, there's absolutely no way in hell I'm going to be able to afford a 150 gold item. Gloves of Haste, move from the miscellaneous shop. Okay, all right, fantastic. That's just super random. Uh, Mango Tree, pick up range for mangoes. Let's see, how, how much do we have left? Not too much. Uh, mango tree, pick up range for mangoes, is changed from the default 150 to 300 because mangoes get stuck in trees and it's really annoying. Now has a mini map icon. I love that. That's cool because people use it as a ward. Lo no longer drops if another consumable item has dropped in the same tier. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. So you can't just get like four consumables all in the first tier, which was pretty annoying where it's like you get to tier two and you're just like, okay, there's five of us. There should be eight items. Where's the item? And somebody's like holding a shovel in their backpack. Somebody else used a royal jelly. Somebody used a mango tree. That felt pretty annoying. Uh, Iron Talon, active damage has been reduced because it works on ancients, so it's broken. Royal jelly no longer drops. Okay, same thing. Consumable items. You can only get one of them. Uh, broom handle, the attack range has been increased. That's fantastic. That's probably one of the crappiest uh, first tier items that you can get from the jungle. Faded brooch, move speed has been reduced because 
people even hold this going into tier three items. Arcane Ring armor has been reduced because once again, people hold this going into tier three items. Vampire Fangs Night Vision has been increased, which is cool. That's actually an underrated component of that item, I think. Philosopher's Stone damage reduction has been reduced. So it's not such a hindrance to hold this item. Very good item to hold while you're dead, though, no matter what. Essence Ring, that's not the color that it is. It's definitely green. Uh, cooldown has been increased from 20 to 25 because this is the most broken Tier 2 item. Clumsy Net, the cast range has been reduced, and the stats have been reduced because it's the second most broken Tier 2 item. Greater Fairy Fire only drops if uh, there are, it, you know, one consumable per tier. The damage has been increased because, you know, people don't like getting Greater Fairy Fire. Repair Kit uh, now has a 60-second cooldown. Thank goodness. And the health regen has been increased. So it's better to hold it, but you can't just use this on your tower, your racks, and then your racks. Spider legs cooldown has been increased despite spider legs honestly not feeling like that great of a tier three item. Enchanted Quiver fixed it, granting a permanent plus 400 range for Tempest Double. Wow, I had no idea it did that. That just means if you have Arc Warden, you get a quiver, you win. Very cool. Cooldown has been reduced because this item sucks. Otherwise, if you're not Arc Warden, apparently. Orb of Destruction, Armor Reduction from negative 5 to negative 4, and the Slow has been reduced, let's see, so 25, okay, so for melee heroes, it's a better slowing item now. Actually, for ranged heroes as well, it's just 5% better. Mindbreaker, cooldown has been reduced. Honestly, this was the best neutral, like the best neutral item at the start, and then it got so nerfed, nobody even holds it. Like, everybody holds the tier one, tier two items over this one. It's it's ridiculous. Titan Sliver. I used to think this was silver. I was convinced it was silver. It's just hard to see, you know. Uh, base damage has been increased, but the status res resistance has been reduced because everybody's complaining about status resistance. Paladin Sword, damage increased. Lifesteal, reduced. Uh, greater healing amplifications, reduced. See, this is strange to me that they would do this because they already changed it so that the lifesteal amplification stacks diminishingly. So this is already a crappier item, and now it's nerfed even more. So, kind of, seems kind of bad. Prince's Knife, cooldown, has been reduced. That's a good item. Fantastic item. I think, I think it's, it's, you know, in a good place. Flicker now has a minimum 200 range blink. I thought that's how it worked before. That just, it just felt like that was how it worked. I guess just ra it randomly gave me 200 most of the time. Uh, max range has been reduced. Okay, that's cool. So it's becoming more consistent, this Flicker. You can kind of game it. Uh, illusionist cape incoming damage has been increased because those illusions are goddamn immortal have a camera impact radius has been increased because this item sucks and the base damage has been increased so it's it's a legitimate nuke now it's a legitimate nuke from where it was before uh heal increased on magic lamp from 300 to 400 because it really feels like with 300 you have to be a hero that has a way of just instantly being like if you're a Dark Willow, or if you're a Puck and you have Magic Lamp, it feels good for any other hero. It feels like you just die after you heal. Pirate Hat, no longer steals gold on kills. I mean, who the hell gets Pirate Hats anyway? Like, you, you never see this item. Can be activated to dig for bounty runes with a 100% success rate. Cooldown 40. All right, that sounds not even remotely fair at that point in the game. Bounties are worth so much. That sounds like everybody's always going to have buyback because they're reliable gold now. That's ridiculous. This needs to be changed. Like, Pirate Hat is just going to be not fair. There are so many late game items you can get, too. Like, you can get Aghanim's Blessings, you can get uh, Moon Shards. So, I don't know, this seems kind of ridiculous, but nobody gets the 60 minutes anyway. All right, that's it. 30 minutes, 30-something minutes, lots of item changes. Uh, we'll see how it affects the game. My biggest takeaway from this is probably that stat items seem like they're back. And uh, I would say pay attention to pro-level pubs because they will very quickly... Uh, figure out what the broken items are and start going for them. And I guarantee you, it'll be like one or two items. It'll be like Dom every game or Vlad's first every game on offlaners. You just you just want to pay attention to that. Start going the broken items because it's a lot of free MMR that you can get before they're nerfed. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you and I hope to see you in another video.